is don't be too loyal to your employer because they are not going to be loyal to you don't make decisions based too much on the company that you're at thinking you know i can never leave them or i don't want to feel like i'm letting them down or anything of that nature you need to look after number one which is yourself in the same way your employer has to do the same thing calculate affordability based on what you can afford as opposed to what the bank says they can afford to give you it's so much easier to borrow money than it is to pay it back so just because someone appears to be rich doesn't mean that they are rich so don't judge a book by its cover Hello. welcome to not another money podcast why is it called not another money podcast you may be wondering it's because this is not your typical money show get ready for real money conversations and lessons expert insights from some of our very special guests and hear some really inspiring stories from everyday people on this podcast you're going to learn how to earn more how to spend less how to grow the difference and most importantly live your best financial life. Hello and welcome to another episode of Not Another Money podcast. I am your host Tolly Frimpong and on this podcast we have real and open conversations about money. So on today's episode I was feeling a bit reflective. It was recently my birthday, I turned 38 and I was sitting down just kind of thinking about money lessons that I had learned over my lifetime. So I thought it'd be really good to share those 38 or 38 of the many lessons that I've learned over my lifetime when it comes to personal financing. Hopefully if you're younger than myself, you can apply some of those lessons now that will help you to win your money a lot sooner than myself. And if you are older than myself it doesn't matter these are still lessons that you can also learn from and yeah hopefully you take one or two things away from here that you think okay I'm going to take this and apply it to my personal finances without further ado I'm going to share those 38 money lessons that I've learned these lessons are in no particular order I was just literally brain dumping as I was thinking about some of the money lessons I've learned over my lifetime so they're not in a particular order or haven't been categorized I've just literally listed them all and I'm going to share them with you now and let me know in the comments section below if you resonate with any of them and equally if you're listening on Spotify or any other podcast streaming platform let me know in the reviews what you thought of this episode and if there's any of these lessons that you can relate to or if there's any that I haven't shared that you think would be great to share as well please do share it in the comment section and of course if you haven't subscribed to the channel please do subscribe and likewise follow the podcast as well and share it with a friend or family member too who could benefit from listening to this podcast and learning for some of the gems that are shared on here but yeah without further ado let me jump into those lessons that I've learned the first lesson I would like to share is do not lend money you cannot afford to lose so don't borrow money to a friend if you can't afford to give that money away because I think that can be the cause of a lot of contention in friendships and relationships when you loan money to a friend or a loved one and they're unable to pay it back that can cause a lot of tension and it can cause a lot of friction so it's best to not part with that money unless you can afford to lose that money that way if you get that money back it is a bonus as opposed to you depending on receiving that money back lesson number two which I learned the hard way is it's so much easier to borrow money than it is to pay it back borrowing money when it comes to credit card usage or overdrafts and loans that money you can spend it without even thinking twice when it comes to repaying that money it's a whole nother story and I can definitely testify to this when it comes to my debt situation that I was in a long time ago so when I was racking up that debt I was spending on a credit card spending my overdraft living my best life I wasn't thinking about the fact that that money is going to have to be paid back but when it came time to now pay all that money back it was a struggle it was not easy I was stressed I was overwhelmed and suddenly I was trying to recall what I had spent all that money on and it's so hard to even remember where all that money went at the time when I was spending I was just enjoying not thinking about the consequences of the fact that this money needs to be paid back so that's a big money lesson that I learned like it's so easy to spend other people's money but when it comes to paying it back that is another story. Lesson number three is do not try and keep up with the Joneses. This is something I had to learn the hard way as well. Because when I was in a lot of consumer debt, I was trying to keep up with my friends and trying to, you know, keep up with the Joneses. You know, my friends were going out to eat. I will follow them. My friends were going to fancy restaurants. I will go there. My friends are buying a house. I too have to buy a house. And I was just kind of doing things to try and fit in and keep up with my peers. Whereas 
if I was really focused on my own financial situation, I probably would have made different decisions when it came to things that I was putting my money towards. But I think that whole keeping up with the Joneses, watching other people's pocket, watching what other people are doing, that can make you make financial decisions that are not necessarily in your best interest. So that is something I learned the hard way. Do not keep up with the Joneses. The actual saying is don't keep up with the Joneses. The Joneses are broke. But whether or not the Joneses are broke really isn't your business. The main thing is to face your front and not watch what other people are doing because you can fall into that trap that I did and get yourself into a serious financial mess if you keep up with the Joneses. Another money lesson I learned is that there's rice at home. And when I say there's rice at home, it's symbolic of the fact that it's not every day go out and spend your money on takeaways or spend your money at restaurants. When I was on my debt free journey and I was going through my budget and I was looking back at previous month's expenses, I quickly realised where a lot of my money was going. It was going on takeaways. There were months where McDonald's got over £150 from me. How is that even possible? Like it's not even good food for me to warrant spending that kind of money there. But that's a lesson that I had to learn the hard way. There is rice at home. There's always food in the house that I can eat rather than spending my money on takeaways just because I can't be bothered to cook. That money could have been put towards more important financial goals and it could have been put towards things that I really found value in. McDonald's does not bring value to my life in any way, shape or form and they don't deserve to be getting that much of my money. So that was a lesson that I finally learned the hard way and fast forward to 2024, I'm pleased to report that McDonald's McDonald's see me very rarely. Lesson number five is just because it's within your means doesn't mean you need to buy it. This is something that I have to continuously remind myself like just because you can afford to buy this thing totally doesn't mean that you need to buy it and I think that's a lesson that you can take away from this conversation. Yes you can afford to buy that shoe in five different colours but does that mean you need to do it? I'll let you think about the answer to that question because you know yourself and you know your reality and you know how many things that you're buying that you don't necessarily need to buy and they're not really in alignment with your financial priorities. Lesson number six is to never opt out of your workplace pension, particularly when your employer is matching your contribution or even contributing a higher percentage than what you contribute. You're literally leaving free money on the table when you opt out of this pension. It's free money you otherwise wouldn't have received. And not only that, you're also missing out on the power of compound interest. So that money that your employer is contributing to your pension by you opting out you're missing out on that money and you're also missing out on the money that that money would be making via the power of compound interest because the interest makes money upon the interest upon the interest and it kind of compounds and yeah you're just missing out on all that extra income in your pension just because you've opted out thinking that I'm taking that money to enjoy today when actually you're doing that at the expense of your tomorrow so definitely don't make the mistake that I'd made when I first started working. So for my first, what, eight years, probably, maybe a bit less, seven, I'd say about seven years of my first employment, I had opted out of the workplace pension, thinking that I was doing something to my employer. I remember getting my first pay slip and thinking, hey, what's what's this pension deduction? I went to HR, I was able to get that money back and I thought I had done them over. Like, yes, I got my money back. They tried to rob me, but I got my pension back in my paycheck. It's only now as an adult or an older adult that I really realised the error of my ways and the fact that I was missing out on all that free money. So yes, if you're listening now and you have opted out of your workplace pension, it's not too late to go back and opt in. Number seven is to unsubscribe from subscriptions that you are not using. I don't know how many times I have signed up for these free trials and then not cancelled when the free trial period was over. And then I ended up paying for months and months of a service which I wasn't actually using just because number one, I wasn't checking my accounts regularly. And number two, I didn't cancel these subscriptions when I finished the free trial period. So please try and avoid those mistakes when it comes to your own subscription. If you sign up for a free trial, set yourself a reminder for a few days before that trial is to come to an end so that you can cancel it before you end up being charged. 
I remember one time being charged for a subscription that was like £700. I literally cried real tears thinking, no, I cannot lose that kind of money. Luckily, I was able to go back to the company, get that charge reversed and get my money back. But to be honest, they didn't have to give me that money back. That was literally the grace of God because, yeah, that was money that I, at the time I could not afford to lose. Even now, I couldn't afford to lose that kind of money. Who wants to lose £700 for something that they're not using? But yeah, I learned my lesson hard and fast that day. And since then, I've been so good when it comes to free trials they're not catching me out anymore so definitely when it comes to subscriptions check your subscriptions regularly and cancel any free trials that you've signed up to lesson number eight is that meal prepping is such a game changer when i started meal prepping i realized i had been sleeping when it came to meal time for a long time because once I started meal prepping and batch cooking, not only was it saving me a lot of time, it was also saving me a lot of money. So if you're not a person that likes to meal prep, just a couple of hours on the weekend will save you so much time during the week. Plus you're going to be able to eat a lot more nutritious meals at home as well. Number nine is that it's not about how much money you make, it's about how much money you keep. So don't focus so much on your income if your expenses are just as high. You really want to widen that gap between your income and your expenses because the gap between the two is your opportunity to build wealth. Number 10 is to not fall for wealth signalers. Wealth signalers are people are people that appear to have a lot of money. So, you know, wealth signalers could be like wearing designer clothes, designer shoes, driving luxury cars, living in big houses. All of these things may or may not be real. So I would say don't make decisions based on what you see other people doing because in actuality, you really don't know what their financial situation is. So just because someone appears to be rich doesn't mean that they are rich. So don't judge a book by its cover. Number 11 is do not rely on one source of income. One income is too close to zero income, which is why it's so important where you can to diversify your income streams so that you're not relying on just one income stream. Because I know for myself, when I was made redundant after being with my employer for 10 years, the thing that kept me afloat was the fact that I had a side hustle and things that I was doing on the side to make additional money. Because if I didn't have those things going on at that time, I would have found myself in a lot of financial trouble. I know a lot of times we value job security, but the reality is you're only as secure as your company is during this season. Tides can change, things can happen and they need to make cuts and they won't hesitate to cut you because at the end of the day, you are simply a payroll number. Going on from that last lesson, the next lesson I learned is don't be too loyal to your employer because they are not going to be loyal to you. Don't make decisions based too much on the company that you're at thinking, you know, I can never leave them or I don't want to feel like I'm letting them down or anything of that nature. You need to look after number one, which is yourself in the same way your employer has to do the same thing. Don't stay in the same company for too many years because doing so you're actually limiting your earning potential you will make a lot more money switching employers every few years than you would trying to get that same pay rise within the organization that you're at another lesson i learned is that it is so much more blessed to give than to receive i used to be very tight back in the days i'm still a work in progress if i'm honest but the more i give the more I receive and the more good I feel. So that's a lesson that I'm learning as I'm getting older. Actually, it is so much more better to give than it is to receive. And there is so much more satisfaction and fulfillment in being a blessing to others. The next money lesson I learned is in regards to my children. So what I've learned is that giving my children everything that I didn't have as a child growing up does not heal my inner child and will not heal your inner child. So you thinking that, you know, I can write all the wrongs for my child or all the presents that I didn't get as a child growing up, I'm going to buy all of those things for my children. All you're actually going to end up doing is spoiling your children because their experience is very different to your experience growing up. So they're not seeing it through the lens of your inner child or that young version of you because that's not their life story. That's not their life experience. To them, this is now their norm. So they won't appreciate it and value it in the way you would if you were that child. Number 14, tell your money where to go at the start of the month so that come the end of the month, you are not left wondering where all that money has gone. Lesson number 15 is the more you learn, the more you earn. The more you add value to yourself, the more you can add value to others and the more money you can earn because of that additional value. So the more you keep learning, the more you keep earning and the more you have the opportunity to build wealth. Okay, I'm conscious of the time and I'm only on number 16. So I'm going to try and whiz through the rest of these lessons otherwise this podcast episode is going to go on forever and I want to get all into this one episode as opposed to drag it on over the course of two episodes so with that being said I'm going to kind of whiz through the remaining 
what is it, 22 lessons? Gosh, let me hurry up. Okay, so let's go. So lesson number 16 is just the lesson I learned in regards to buying a home. If you're two people coming together to buy a home, if possible, try and buy the house on just one of your incomes instead of two of your incomes so that that second income can be used to fund your lifestyle and fund all your other financial goals and aspirations. Because when the banks tell you how much they're going to offer you as a mortgage, their calculation of affordability may not necessarily be yours because they're not taking into consideration and account your financial goals. Let's say, for example, you're about to go off and have a baby. Suddenly, that income that you're getting from your employer for a season, you're not no longer going to receive it or you're going to receive a reduced amount of that money all of those things you need to factor into your planning when it comes to getting your mortgage so calculate affordability based on what you can afford as opposed to what the bank says they can afford to give you lesson number 17 is to spend more money on experiences rather than things the memories from these experiences last for far longer than any of the material possessions that you're going to be buying number 18 is to invest more in assets than in liabilities because if you invest in enough assets those assets eventually can be used to fund those liabilities but don't put the cart before the horse lesson number 19 is to always pay yourself first on payday everybody else gets to enjoy the fruits of your labor so it's so important that you get to enjoy the fruits too so before allocating money to anybody else make sure you pay yourself first ideally you want to pay yourself a tenth but at least start with one percent and build it up as the months go by so that by a year's time you're able to be paying yourself first 10% of your income and that 10% is what you can put towards your financial goals and start building towards your financial future number 20 is always check your pay slip don't assume because you've been getting paid from your employer for a number of months or years that mistakes can't happen humans are fallible mistakes can happen so it's important that you understand your pay slip every part of it and how much of your money is going to who the next one is to say no to splitting the bill this is a controversial one but it's one that I stand by when it comes to your money you have a plan you have a purpose you have a goal you have things that you're trying to achieve and you have your budget don't let anyone pressurize you to overspend your budget lesson number 22 is to avoid high interest debt high interest debt usually occurs in store cards and when you buy things on higher purchase or payment plans or payday loans all of these things are high interest credit which you want to avoid at all costs because you're going to end up paying double sometimes triple the amount that you actually borrowed lesson number 23 i learned is the importance of an emergency fund try and save at least three to six months worth of expenses the reason for this is when you have that emergency fund in place suddenly an emergency becomes an inconvenience lesson 24 is the power of automation automate 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 when it comes to your finances don't put the power in your hand take it out of your hand and automate as much of the process as you can whether it's your savings whether it's your investing whether it's paying off debt automate that process set those standing orders set those direct debits in place so that you're not having to do a lot of the manual work yourself lesson number 25 is to shop around for the best deal this applies across all areas from your food to your travel to your groceries to your subscriptions to your utilities always shop around to make sure you are getting the most bang for your buck lesson number 26 is to take advantage of cashback sites and reward sites lesson number 27 is to regularly review your budget as needed don't just set it and forget it the budget is only as powerful as its application so it's important when you set that budget to revisit it and review it and refine it on a regular basis lesson number 28 do not just buy something because it's on sale thinking that you are saving money you are not saving money you are spending money i think we need to reprogram our mindset around around that topic because 50% saved is still 50% spent so rather than thinking I've saved 50% actually always remember you have spent 50% so if it's not something you had initially planned to buy and it's on offer so you've just bought it you haven't saved money you've spent money lesson number 29 I'd say is to practice delayed gratification it's so important to learn how to say no to yourself and to discipline yourself lesson number 30 is to have financial goals and create a plan because the reality is that time is going to pass 
passed by irrespective of what plans and goals you have in place so it's better to plan for it and set those goals so that when that time goes by you're being intentional about how you're spending it and what you're putting your money towards lesson number 31 is to be aware of lifestyle inflation lifestyle inflation essentially is where your income increases and your cost of living increases in alignment with that pay increase and you keep doing that every time you earn more money you spend more money you earn more money you get a bigger car you earn even more money you get a bigger house and as your income is rising your expenses are rising in alignment with it so you're not creating that gap that we spoke about earlier between your income and expenses in fact that gap is just closing which means that you're not giving yourself that wriggle room that you need in order to start growing and building that wealth lesson number 32 is to keep all your financial documents organized and in one place because you never know when you're going to need it lesson number 33 takes us back to those financial goals that we spoke about earlier is one thing setting those financial goals is another thing reviewing them and refining them on a regular basis because the goals you set five years ago may no longer be the goals you're pursuing today so it's so important to review and adjust those goals on a regular basis just to make sure they still align with your financial goals and your financial priorities lesson 34 is to get around like-minded people it's one thing you're pursuing a financial goal of debt freedom but then you're surrounding yourself with people that live a lifestyle on credit it's going to be very hard for you to stay focused and achieve that debt free goal so surround yourself with people that have positive financial habits good financial habits that you want to adopt so that you can learn from them iron sharpens iron lesson number 35 is to avoid impulse purchases try out the 72 hour rule which is basically where if there's something you want to buy that you hadn't initially planned for wait 72 hours and see if you still want that thing and if you decide after 72 hours that you do want that thing then go ahead and buy it as opposed to just buying it impulsively in a moment because eight out of ten times when you do that and you wait those 72 hours you realize actually that was just an impulsive purchase that I was about to make and I don't really want it and need it as much as I thought I did in that moment when I was about to buy it. Lesson number 36 I learned was the power of compound interest and how it can work for you and how it can work against you and I learned this when I started learning about the power of investing and money that you invest now if you leave it in an index fund for example 10 15 20 years down the line that money has made money but not even just that that money that has made money also now makes money and over time it starts to compound and the money grows it's like the seventh wonder of the world they say or is it the eighth wonder that they call it either way it's like it blew my mind when I really started to understand how powerful compound interest can be and how it can really help in the process of facilitated wealth building. Another money lesson that I learned from a book actually called Your Money or Your Life is calculating the cost of an item in terms of hours of your life. So how many hours of my life did this item cost? Is it worth that time? should I buy it so for example if a shoe costs let's say 200 pounds and you get paid 100 pound an hour when you put purchases into that kind of context it really does make you do a double take and think twice about whether or not you want to make that purchase because yes I like those shoes but actually I'll rather have those two hours of my life to spend with my children or spend with a friend and lesson number eight that I learned which is one of the most powerful ones that's probably helped me on my financial journey so far is the power of self-learning Money is one of those topics that we weren't taught at school or many of us at least weren't taught at school. I know in my school there were no lessons or subjects around financial education and financial literacy but what I love now is the power of the internet, the power of books and podcasts like this. Shameless plug I know but the power of financial education that is available to us now means that we don't have to remain in the dark we can learn about things too so like I mentioned on this podcast so many different money lessons that I've learned over the years so far which I've packed into this one episode you can take them and apply them to your financial life and you can make different decisions but the power of all these tools these books these courses that you could do online there's just a wealth of knowledge out there now like there's really no excuses the information is there it's just up to us to now go out and find it and digest it 